Is one of us going to die in this episode, Emily? Wow. Good question. Um, and I can't answer it until after we've recorded, unfortunately. Until after we've recorded, because then you'll know if one of us has died. Yes. Well, I guess I might not be able to answer it because it might be me that has died. But at that point, you will be able to answer your own question. What if I won't if you've died? You'll refuse to answer the question? No. What if I like am that thick? (laughs) You won't know? (laughs) Yeah, I'll just be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe she's taking a nap or maybe she can like do that purposefully and come back from it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, we never know. I might. Sad anyway, episode Kyle. start. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Emily Moyers and Kyle Imperator take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Emily! Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Oh, it's so thank you, guys. It's so thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me on. Kyle, mm. guess what I've got? Uh, uh, a toe fungus. A uh, boy. I mean, yes. But I've also got a word. <gasps> You've got a word? I for do me? have a word. Poor moi. I've got a word just for you just picked out especially for you kyle oh i love it emily you're so nice what is it your word especially for you is scorigami and that is spelled s-c-o-r-i-g-a-m-i scorigami emily Uh uh-huh i'm a thousand percent sure this is a new pokemon (laughs) it could be it must be (laughs) no it's not it means something else Okay, so this is clearly a portmanteau. I know what that word means now. (laughs) It is. We're going to talk about it later. I'm going to assume that it's a more recent word. It is a very recent word. Because I feel like origami didn't come to English until a lot recently. A lot recently. Hmm. (laughs) Scorigami. Yeah. Is this like an esports version of making origami? (laughs) (laughs) Um, It does relate to sports. It does relate to sports. Does it, it does relate indeed. to origami? Uh, yeah. Is it like the, a game made out of origami making? The origami half of it is iffy. I it would focus iffy. more on the score half. <laughs> okay. So this is, it's, is it a game? Is it a noun? It's, it is a noun. It's sort of a concept. Sort of a concept. So we're really starting this one in the abstract. Although something can be a scorigami. Something can be a scorigami. But something can just be scorigami. Well, it's sort of like, like scorigami is an art form. <laughs> okay. Like wood twiddling. What's it called when you... Whittling, whittling, whittling. No, wood twiddling, Emily. That's a whole different thing. And that's for uh, arboreal, arbor lovers. Um, Okay. Uh, Final guess. Scorigami is the art of paper cutting. That's actually, that's a good guess. That's a fun respinning of this Borbanto. It is not what this means. (laughs) All right. I am at a loss. Give it to me. So, Kyle, I do want to preface by just quickly saying that usually on this podcast, we do like to talk about words that like anyone could use in everyday conversation. And we Mm -hmm. try to avoid specific usage jargon type words. Sure, sure, sure. Today isn't one of those times. Today is going to be (laughs) a different one. (laughs) Today is an unusual day. Scorigami It means a scoring combination that has never happened before in a sport or league's history, and it is primarily used in the context of American football. Emily. Yeah. I'm going to murder you. (laughs) So Emily said, hey, you know that thing that I all of a sudden one day announced to Kyle that is my new favorite thing? (laughs) And Kyle just had to go with it. (laughs) Emily, I've... you've been writing fantasy football like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> anyway, scoragami. Scoragami. So, Kyle. is this something that can be used in like other sports, or is it like is it 
It can be. I guess tell me more about the word is what I'm asking. (laughs) Sure. I will tell you more about the word. So as you guessed, this is a recent word. The word scorigami came about in the year 2016. Oh, it's so recent. So recent. That's great, though. We have so few words that are new in life today. (laughs) Do we? Well, we're going to talk about that too. That's going to be one of the quotes in my famous quote book. (laughs) We have so few words in our life that we use today. (laughs) Well, this word was coined by a man named John Boyce, B O I S, who is a sports writer and video producer for the sports blog SB Nation. So on December 7th, 2016, John Boyce put out a video. I remember the day like it was yesterday. That's right. Let's let's set the scene. But before we set the scene, you've got to make a flashback noise. Oh, I don't like the flashback noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how time travel sounds, Emily. <laughs> That's true. I guess we can't change it. Those are the <laughs> the unchangeable yeah. time Standards. travel sounds. <laughs> yeah. December 7th, 2016, John Boyce put out a video and an accompanying article called Scoragami, the story of every NFL final score that has ever happened. And basically what John oh. Boyce did was he made this giant chart that has tracked every final score there's ever been in professional football, even the ones before the modern National Football League, all the way back to 1920, and is still updating to this day. I mean, as somebody who is like, one of the things that I just get so much enjoyment out of in my life is data entry. (laughs) That makes me so happy. Good for that man. I'm glad this exists. Yes. And it's very fun to like look around it because it's like the basic chart just shows it's like a graph of all the possible scores and you know like the ones that have happened the box is colored in the ones that haven't happened the box is white but then there's all sorts of settings you can mess with to get Wait, different statistics the, ones, the as well. scores that haven't happened yet what well it's like a, it's like you know basically a plot with all you know numbers one to 73 along one axis and one oh, to whatever along the my other axis. god emily and it's just <laughs> wait okay now i'm confused you can look it up you can find it it is on nflscoragami.com so if you're I looking assume, at it i assume we'll be putting a picture of this chart on the instagram at some point i'm sure and if you're listening you can you can look it up right now so all the green boxes are scores that have happened all the white spaces are have never happened and all the black cannot happen does that make sense? So this isn't this is just checking off whether or not this score has existed, like has has happened before. Exactly. It's not keeping track of like how many times this score So it can. If you oh, tick off there's okay. that setting for show count, it'll tell you how many times the score <gasps> has happened. Oh my you, god, it's beautiful. If you tick show gradient, it will color <gasps> it by how often it's happened. It's like a weather chart. <laughs> yeah. And then you can change. It'll also show you the first year that that score happened or the most recent year that that score happened and lots of other things. It's fun. Wow. This is so much fun, Emily. Yeah. It's very satisfying. Emily, is this how you get me to like sports? Because it's working. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> so in the video, John Boyce basically sort of takes you through this chart and all the stats that this chart depicts and he also introduces a word that he has made up scorigami which he defines as quote the art of building final scores that have never happened before in nfl history and the video shows this graphic of like origami folds representing particular point gains which then come together to create a particular final score so that's the origami part of it it's a reach (laughs) Yeah, I mean, definitely like a little bit of a ham-fisted portmanteau to use for this um, purpose, but catchy Yeah, and a great little thing. And it is definitely catchy because in the years since that video came out, scoragami has become like a well-used term in the football world. Oh. The way I learned this word in the first place is that a couple weeks ago, I heard a football announcer say it during a game. So funny. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember what game it was because it was a little while ago, but one of the teams scored 
a touchdown kind of late in the game. And one of the announcers was saying like, this was almost a scoregami. The score before that touchdown has never been the final score before. And it would have been a scoregami, but now it's not. That's so funny. And he was like, it's my favorite thing in football is scoregami. And I was like, what the hell is that? (laughs) Seriously. Yeah. And there's also a scoregami Twitter bot that posts during every single NFL football game. And it posts at the end of the game Mm. just to say whether or not this was a scoregami. But it also posts during the game at the end of each quarter with the percentage chance that this game will end in a scoregami. Oh, which is fun. very fun. As I mentioned earlier, scoregami is almost exclusively talked about in American football, though it can technically apply to any sport. And there is actually a reason that it is kind of exclusive to American football. Any theories about that reason, Kyle? Uh, I was trademarked. Yes. Yep. Yep. By Tim T. Football. Tim T. Football. <laughs> is it because, I don't know, because most football games end with the same score is it because football has specific like score like numbers and so it's hard to add up to different things that is exactly the reason kyle Mm -hmm. it is that the scoring system in american football is wild (laughs) yeah i mean I'm, i'm seeing here on this like the last time like a game ended with zero and zero was 1943. Well, yes. I mean, that is sort of just a, a due to the fact that people have gotten better at football over time. The early games were very often low scoring. Oh, interesting. <laughs> there were a lot of shutouts in the first few years of football and then and then everybody got better at it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> John Boyce talks about in the video that like, you know, other sports, you know, there are lots, it's very possible to get one point or two points or three points. So because you're working with smaller numbers, it's not hard to get any particular set. It's easier to add it up. Right. What are the scoring numbers for sport ball? I was I was just about to ask you, Kyle, I, I have another question. And unfortunately, this one's trickier. Oh, what no. do you know about American football scoring? Oh, God, about American <laughs> football scoring. OK, so yeah. what, what I are know, the ways you can get points? I know in three football? things, Emily. All I right, know what three do you know? things. One, when you score a touchdown, John Madden comes out and goes, hey, bam, you got it. Congratulations. No yeah. matter what, if he's alive, if he's dead, that's. One, a factual thing that happens in football. Accurate. Yep. Can Two, confirm. if you don't dance after you score a touchdown, the points don't count. <laughs> That's right. That is right also. They take the points away if you don't have a special unique touchdown dance. And number three is you if, get if extra If just points. one of these three facts could be related to a, a number of points, that would be great. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, how about the fourth fact is that okay. the third fact is you get extra points if you are holding the ball for someone to kick and then take it away at the last second <laughs> and they go, whoa, and fall on their back. That's right. That's right. Lucy is killing yeah. in the NFL this year. <laughs> Emily, I have literally no idea how the points are calculated. So funny. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to give a quick rundown. I'm not going to get into the rules of it all cuz we'll be here all night, so I'm just going to do the point totals. So the two most common scoring plays are a field goal, which will get you 3 points, and a touchdown, which is technically worth 6 points, but a touchdown is always immediately followed up by one of two kind of special what they call try plays, a conversion play. There's the extra point, which is worth one point, or you can go for a two-point conversion that's worth two points, but the extra point is a lot easier to get. There's about a 90% success rate on that. So the teams have a choice which point they go for? They can, Yes, but the two-point conversion oh. is successful less than 50% of the time, so most often they will go for the extra point because it's pretty easy to get. So. A touchdown Those typically like ends up bad being bad rules. <laughs> like I said, football is crazy. Um, <laughs> so a touchdown typically winds up being worth seven points, but can sometimes be worth eight points or six points if you, you know, fail your conversion. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's oh, also God. something called a safety, which is worth two points. These are pretty rare because that's when. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Isn't that when you fart and you're announcing it to the room? Yes. <laughs> Safety. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> yeah. Safety. But they're they're rare because no one's ever trying to fart in a room. <laughs> um no, it's 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 
no one's ever really trying to get a safety. They really only happen by accident or sort of opportunistically. What? It's yeah. There, safeties Why is are a that a thing? thing if it only happens accidentally? <laughs> because it's just like, oh, this thing happened that feels like it should be worth some points. What? So we'll just give you a couple. <laughs> This is a game that's been going on for how long and this is still the rules? Yeah. Uh, well, and there's something else called a conversion safety, which is theoretically oh. the only way that a team could score one point by itself. But this play is so rare that it has literally never happened in the NFL. Oh, yeah. that, that Yeah, that's blocked off on <laughs> on the score garmi Score a garmi chart. Score, yes, yes. Yeah, so there is the the six one score. Um, he John Boyce says is like the Mac Daddy of Scorigami because it's a score that will very probably never happen, but theoretically could. So interesting. If if you're interested in it, I recommend you watch his video because he'll explain it way better than I ever could. But because of this Gaga do do nonsense scoring system, you know, final scores of three or seven or ten happen all the time, but final scores of five or eleven almost never happen. So that's it's like more exciting when those do happen because they're harder to get to. Wait, how do you even get a score of five? You'd have to get a field goal and a safety. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't understand this at all. It's it's this wackadoo. is the one where they go back and forth on a field. Yes, and the football is shaped like the Arnold character. <laughs> yes, yes, football. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Kyle, I can tell you're a little intimidated by all this football talk, so let's get back to word yeah. talk. Word talk? Word talk. That's what we do here, you know? I mean, definitely a, a more of a comfort zone for me, but, you know, <laughs> Emily, listen, I like to get out of my comfort zone. I could be a man's man. Here I am. Hey, we're talking about football. Game's on tonight. Get the nachos out. I'm going to drink me a Coors and make love to my wife. <laughs> That's what happens on football Sundays, right? Okay, so anyway, <laughs> Kyle, scorigami is what's called a neologism. Oh. Do you know what that is, Kyle? I, that sounds familiar. Well, I'll give you a hint. It comes from the Greek words neo and logos. Neo, uh, that's new and word? It, you got it. That's literally oh, it. <laughs> okay. Wait, so does it, does it just mean a new word? Yeah, so a neologism is a word or phrase that has formed relatively recently oh. and has not become part of like mainstream language or might oh. still be on its way to becoming part of mainstream language. Emily, that's so fun. It is so fun because neologisms, they can come from like a lot Gaga of Like Gaga Nonsense. Like Gaga do Nonsense <laughs> is our own neologism. Neologism. And it's up to you guys to spread the word. Yeah. This has become a charity event for Gaga to do nonsense. <laughs> this is our push. Yeah. Spread the word to start the word. That's our slogan. Gaga do do nonsense. So Kyle, neologisms can come from a lot of different places. They a lot of times come from like prominent current events. So like very recent examples would be like Brexit is a neologism. Fake news could be one. What about Kofefe? Kofefe, I saw that on the list. Oh, nice. Uh, Zoom fatigue. Oh, I haven't heard that one, but that sounds to me more like, you know how like when you get home and a dog runs around? <laughs> And then yeah, he after, stops, he just gets tired of it. Yeah, after your dog has zoomies, he's got yeah. zoom fatigue. <laughs> zoom fatigue. <laughs> no, that's that's like a that's like a pandemic yeah. you know, working from home yeah. fatigue. A lot of neologisms are also like jargon used Pumpkin by specific... inflation. Pumpkin inflation I saw in the news literally yesterday and I oh. said, No one needs this. <laughs> what is a pumpkin inflation? It's the idea that the cost of pumpkins are going up. It's like we don't need a portmanteau <laughs> for this. And it's like also we could just stop buying pumpkins. Like all we do is carve holes into them and then throw them on our lawn. Like oh, come on. You don't you don't make pumpkin pie from scratch? I mean, some people do. Do you? I've done it once. It's a Good. it's a mess. Pumpkins are a mess, you they're, guys. I mean, they're like it's just like they're the whales of the vegetable world. Let's be honest. <laughs> that's that's it's what we're all thinking. It's what we're Pumpkins all thinking. are the whales of are they vegetables? <laughs> Let's the well, I mean Are they I feel like I've heard the phrase yeah, wintergreen like, fruit? 
Well, I mean, would you call a zucchini a vegetable? I mean, aren't they all? The gourds? last time we treaded on this turf, I said the tomatoes were a fruit, and you sounded like you wanted to launch me into space. So, no, tomatoes are a fruit, but they're also a vegetable. Okay, okay. I well, think we found on. our new <laughs> subject for buttered parsnips. Yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, a lot of neologisms are like jargon used, you know, in like specific contexts, like sports terms like scorigami, or scientific terms like spaghettification. A lot of tech words. Is it still a neologism or is it like, was it a neologism? I mean, I think there's a gray area for certain words. Is there like a statute of limitations for that? (laughs) Um, I feel like spaghettification, I might still consider a neologism because it's really like, I feel like you could stop calling it a neologism when people don't feel the need to explain it when they say it. (laughs) Fair. That's really good. I like that. But people still need to explain what spaghettification is. That's a good rule. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, But like tech words like malware or blog or, you know, things like that, those all were neologisms or neologisms. They, you know, they might now be considered part of like mainstream lexicon. That's fun. There's also like words that formed within certain subcultures, like the verb to diss someone or using the word cool to mean good. Those are both neologisms that formed in the black community and are now pretty widely used. Pretty, yeah, I would say. Yeah. 100% widely used. Yes. <laughs> and on the note of, you know, cool being used to mean good, neologisms can also be words that like, took on new meanings. Sure. So like millennial has technically been a word since the 1600s, oh. but in the late 80s, early 90s took on a completely different meaning. So Fun. that definition of millennial would be considered a neologism. Wow. I never even thought of that word existing before the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so they're very cool. A lot of also like internet memes and, you know, internet slang can be considered yeah, like um uh doge yeah maybe things like that there were also i was looking at lists of neologisms and some of them were just like quotes i guess like phrases could count as words. yeah like i saw on the list that was like uh what what was it that will smith said to whoever he hit he was like get my wife's name out your mouth and i was like i don't think that's a neologism Chris that's just Rock. something somebody said <laughs> Definitely not a neologism, because I would assume that that would have to be said more than once for that to be a neologism. (laughs) Yeah, I think, like I said, I think there's gray areas. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) But that's language, you know, it is it is a moving body. It is a moving body moving down a football field towards the goal post. That's right. But who knows how many points it's going to end up being. (laughs) Yeah, definitely, probably more than five. Kyle, a lot of neologisms are also, as you noted, portmanteaus, which scorigami is as well. So we have mentioned the word portmanteau on our podcast, but we didn't really dig into it. Kyle, do you know what it means? I do. I do. Portmanteau is two words put together. The jammed, it's Pokemons. It is. (laughs) It is basically Pokemons. And it's also a, it's also a travel case. It is. Yeah, I was just going to say. So as, as discussed prior on our podcast, the word portmanteau has two meanings. In modern usage, it is a blending of words like smoke and fog coming together to be smog or spoon and fork into spork. Oh. would both be considered portmanteaus. But the original meaning of the word is a piece of luggage. A portmanteau oh. was like a big trunk that would fold out into two big halves. So it was like two segments that were coming yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. You visualizing? I am. I didn't know that. I've That's like an old-fashioned trunk. Yeah, Yeah, wow. so I think that's why, you know, because it's like two halves two of a things thing coming together. being put together. Love yes. that. And Love what's that. fun about it is that the word portmanteau is itself a blended word. It comes from the French word porter, porter, which means to carry, and manteau, which means a cloak or a coat. A carrying cloak. Interesting. Well, like it carries your cloaks. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Put those words in my mouth. Uh, That's right. We're going to deep fake that so that (laughs) it is your voice. (laughs) Yeah. So here's, here's the story, Kyle. So you have the word portmanteau, which meant a traveling trunk. 
shout out to the traveling trunk show <laughs> shout out <laughs> and that that is all that that word means for centuries and then in 1871 lewis carroll publishes alice through the looking glass which oh. contains the poem jabberwocky Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. You got it, Kyle. Mm -hmm. So Jabberwocky is a poem full of nonsense words, which Lewis Carroll made up, many of which are actually blended words, <gasps> which I did not know until Me this week. <laughs> either. Yeah. So in the book, the character Humpty Dumpty is explaining this to Alice. Oh. Alice asks what the word slithy means from the poem. And wow. Humpty Dumpty says, well, slithy means lithe and slimy. You see, it's like a portmanteau. There are two meanings packed up into one word. That is so great. I yeah. love that he explains it. <laughs> Do you think that's Lewis Carroll being like, man, this book is wacky, but somebody in this book has to explain what's going on to the to the readers because they are just not going to get this. Well, and tr there's like a whole passage in Through the List really? where Humpty explains <laughs> what like most of the words in the Jabberwocky mean. <laughs> so that's, that's Lewis Carroll saying, I have to prove myself to the other authors that I'm not completely off my like, rocker. There is a method to this madness. Please, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, but apparently slithy means lithe and slimy. And there are a bunch of other portmanteaus in the poem that we could talk about, but we might get to those in just a minute. Ooh. In the meantime, Kyle, that is all I have to say about portmanteaus and ne neologisms and scorigami. And scorigami. Hey, that was Awesome. I really like scorigami. I'm glad, Kyle. I was nervous to do a sports one. Like, oh, you should never be nervous about sports. If anything, <laughs> I should be nervous about you doing sports. And I was. <laughs> but it was actually much more pleasant than I, I could have ever dreamed. Oh, well, I'm um, glad, Kyle. Do you want to prove what you've learned by using scorigami in a sentence? I would. Which is tricky. Oh, God, so <laughs> tricky. But I think I can do it. Let's see. Uh, on Thursday, the Jets and the Panthers went 32 and 11, marking off another box on the Scorigami chart. Thumbs up. Look at camera. Forced smile. Thanks, John Boyce. <laughs> I'm John Boyce. <laughs> I'm John Boyce. <laughs> oh, that Yuck, would be. I'm John Boyd. <laughs> that would be a scorigami if that happened. It has not. I know. I looked at the chart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were looking for one that had happened, so I was confused. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but you got it. That is that is how you use it. Thank you very much. Oh. Kyle, before we close out, yes. should we do a little game? I would love to do a game. <laughs> Oh, am I going to have to play football for this? Because I'm really bad. No, I, I went for a more wordy game. Oh, okay. That's fair. Kyle, today's game is called Beware the Portmanteau, My Son. Oh, I love this. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work, Kyle. I'm going to give you a portmanteau from the poem Jamberwocky. Oh my God, I love this. And you're going to tell me what two words make up that portmanteau. Oh my god, I love this! Okay. And if you're at a loss, I can tell you one of the words and you can just try to guess the other. Okay, that's fair. You're going to give me the one I know, though, but <laughs> probably. <that's fair. laughs> so, Kyle, your first word is Mimsy. <gasps> Mimsy, the last Mimsy starring Rain Wilson. No, this is as in uh, all Mimsy were the Borogoves. All Mimsy were the Borogoves. Oh, wow. All the Mimsy were the Borogoves. So Mimsy is going to be mum and flimsy. Very close. It is miserable and flimsy. <gasps> what? Why? <laughs> oh, Mimsy. Just... Actually, I like that. That's like a really like fantastical way to say somebody is sad. They're Mimsy. Kyle, all of these words are so good. I can't wait to tell you the rest of these. <laughs> I feel like Mimsy is like, remember how in one of the early, the other episodes we talked about how falling sickness was what we called epilepsy? Yeah. I feel like Mimsy could be <laughs> used for some sort of horrible disease. I'm like, oh, you got the Mimsy? You got a little Mimsy in you? <laughs> oh, feeling miserable and flimsy. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle. What do you think Frumius is <gasps> a combination of? 
Froomey was the Bandersnatch, right? Yes, the Froomeus Bandersnatch. Froomeus Bandersnatch. Froomeus is fractious and <gasps> uh, roomy. Okay, both wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, one of the words is fuming. Furious and furious. You got fuming. it. Yes, fuming and furious. That's good. That's fun, the way he moved that little R around. Yeah, a lot of, they're like not direct portmanteaus. They're kind of jumbling of them. Lewis Carroll is talking about the word frumious in particular. He says, for instance, take the two words fuming and furious. Make up your mind that you will say both words, but leave it unsettled, which you will say first. If you have the rarest of gifts, a perfectly balanced mind, you will say frumious. So funny. (laughs) Really good. Isn't that lovely? Hi, that is lovely. He's yeah. leaving it to a flatus. Yes, he is. <laughs> really. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Your next word is vorpal, as in <gasps> the vorpal sword. The vorpal sword. sword. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Vorpal. That's going to be like voidal and warp. No, both wrong. Uh, I'll tell you, one of the words is verbal. What? Verbal? Yes. And the other word is morbid no the other word is gospel what yeah i like that though oh my god wait why verbal i don't know i think that was one of the ones where lewis carroll was like i don't really know why (laughs) (laughs) hey i came up with this word but i also came up with rules that explain the words and so now i've got to make that rule work for this word (laughs) verbal and gospel all right kyle your next word is galumphing well that is clearly galloping yep and th- I can't think of a single word that has umph in it. Umph. <laughs> is it umph? No, umph. it is triumphant. Triumphant. Galumphing. Yeah, he went galumphing back after he he slayed the uh, Jabberwock. All right, Kyle, your last word is chortled, which is chortled. a word invented by Lewis Carroll in this uh, poem. Wild. Isn't that wild? <laughs> I, that is wild. Yeah. I mean, this is just chuckled and snorted, right? It is. You got Got it. it. Chortled. It's a really good word. It is a really good word that came from the poem The Jabberwocky, which is crazy. It really is crazy. Man, we we gotta do more words like this. Come on. Come on, America. Get your shit together, all (laughs) right? Yeah, we gotta be the next Lewis Carroll. Oh, boy. Kyle, what a good episode. Thank you for listening to this shenanigan thank you so much to you emily friends at home hopefully you've been keeping score on your own score gami chart (laughs) for who's been winning the episodes and with what point scores we've been winning that's right because you're going to be uh quizzed on it at the end of the year (laughs) yes but more importantly you guys remember that you can find butter no parsnips on social media on facebook and on instagram at butter no parsnips podcast and if you like today's episode consider giving us a five star rating or review wherever you heard us and if you really like today's episode you can consider donating to our patreon at patreon.com slash butter no parsnips yeah donating five dollars or more earns you a shout out either on social media or here on the podcast so thank you so much to all of you who help us make what we make yeah and with that let's close out i have been emily i have been a frumious kyle oh and this, and this has, has been, been butter no butter i wanted to no do it together parsnips. Sorry. yeah parsnips <laughs> yay that's it soft ending yeah another flawless landing for emily and kyle <laughs> Thank you for listening to Butter No Parsnips. Butter No Parsnips is produced by Seth Glicksman, Emily Moyers, and Kyle Imperator. The theme music and additional music is by Kyle Imperator. If you liked listening to this episode, subscribe and give us a good rating and or positive review wherever you heard it. If you really liked listening, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butternoparsnips. There you can get bonus content you can't get anywhere else, like the monthly Patreon-exclusive podcast Buttered Parsnips. Your support means the world to us and encourages us to keep making more. Thanks in advance, and we'll be back next week.